How was GearFest 2023? GearFest was brilliant. I had a really good time. Do you know what the best thing about it was? Going down and meeting people who, A, I haven't seen for ages, and B, people who I've not actually met and that I speak to online, you know, and you get to see these people face to face. You know, I've created good friendships with people I've never actually seen. And it was great to see these sorts of people. It's, I mean, like the guys at um, Make Noise Pro Audio, you know, they gave me a cup. And I'm having my cup of tea in it at the moment. So, you know, it's it's good to um, it's good to meet up with a lot of people that um, you haven't seen in ages. It was great to meet up with PMC. Um, it was great to see Paul at emerging. Um, the, the 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 one thing I really really enjoyed about the day was it was a it was very much a um, it was very much a small community of people. There was it wasn't like Nam where you got thousands and thousands of booths with just ridiculous amounts of people this is very much a very niche kind of um gear convention type thing so it's very much um we're all in the same boat we're all gear enthusiasts gear addicts we we all love looking at audio equipment so it was really good to go down and now there was a few things that really kind of um really kind of really caught my eye um so there was a few things right I, I, i'll go through them i posted a, a post up on instagram just listing out all these um different things but um one of them the, the one there was a speaker brand alcons and they they do basically loudspeakers for cinema atmos rigs and stuff and they want to branch into the um the kind of studio market but what they were saying to me was like look we we want to branch in studio market we came here and we want to kind of see what people's reactions were and you know i've i've heard speakers you know i've got great speakers i've got arcturus in the other room pmc's in here x machina's in there so i've got really good speakers around me and it takes a lot for me to be impressed by speakers and I, I, I honestly I listen to these speakers <clears throat> and um, I sat there and I'll be honest with you two speakers just two <clears throat> put this track on which was um, like percussive congas bongos all that running across left to right and I could physically see the audio and it, it was it was mesmerizing from an audiophile's perspective, watching this audio just just kind of dance between the, the stereo image, <clears throat> it was so good. And afterwards, I was I was literally my jaw dropped, and I said to the guys, like, look, you've got to put these into production. They are incredible. Um, I've been in talks with them since um, since since Gearfest, and um, yeah, I'm going to get a, an, an Atmos demo in because the one thing that I could I could really, I just wanted to, I, I really wanted to hear was like, how, I could hear how good it was going from left to right. I could follow this sound. Like with pinpoint accuracy, I could follow this sound. Now, what I then thought was, how is this going to sound in Atmos? How is this going to sound going all the way around me above my head and then Trinov optimized for perfection? I mean, this is going to sound unreal. Now, the one thing I didn't get, and one, one thing they couldn't supply me, was a price list, because obviously it's prototype stage at the moment, they haven't quite gone down that route. So I'm hoping they're not too expensive, but um, yeah, Alcons, definitely a pair of monitors um, you should really, really consider. Um, I, I was blown away by them, honestly, really was blown away. Uh, great to see the PMC guys, went in to see PMCs, looked at the uh, PMC 8s, because uh, I'm thinking of putting some some eights in here and then putting my 140s that I use my left and right speakers into these speakers, then putting my 65s up on the ceiling. So I'm thinking about that at the moment. Um, but I might, well, I am, I, I wouldn't build it into this room, but when I move, I'm going to eventually, uh, at some point move this room. And uh, when I do, I'm thinking that's maybe cause I want to stick with PMC. I love PMC. I, these are, these are incredible. Um, so I'm, I, I spoke to the guys at PMC, uh, organised going down to Islington for a, a proper demo on the uh, PMC 8s with the XBDs. Um, great to see them as well because, uh, I'll tell you what, not only do they do great speakers, 
they gave me a PMC beer, which was such nice beer. They need to put that into manufacturing because um, the beer, I mean, it's, it, it was good. Good beer. Right. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, when I see uh, Paul emerging, um, looked at the PSI AVAs, um, they basically, what they were was, um, you put them at the, basically, if you get like a boominess in the room, you can put them at the back of the room and they, they take the, take the boominess out. Now, what I have got is loads of GearFest, uh, videos that I've got uploaded into a playlist. So head over to the playlist that's on our channel, um, where you can see in-depth discussions about all of these products that I'm talking about now. Um, but the AVAs, they, they were brilliant. Um, they basically took the boominess out of the room. So you could turn them on and off with an, with an app. And it was like, turn them off. And it was like, you could hear the boominess in the, in the back of the room. And it wasn't an ideal room what we were in. Uh, and then you turn them on and it, it, it took it out. And it basically works with... Um, Obviously, this in these videos with Paul, it does goes into a lot more detail. But from what I gathered, it's it's a microphone that takes the audio coming in and then um, corrects. Basically, does some correction. Look, I don't know. It all I know is that it takes the boominess out of the out of the room, especially at the back of the room. They're like bass traps, basically. Um, but active, they call them active bass traps. Um, so what else was there? Oh, um, hum audio. Now over here we've got the Hum, the um, Hum Audio Lull, the Look Ahead Analog Limiter, and I love, I love everything that Christoph makes. It's it's such high quality stuff. So I was very interested in going and seeing his console. Went in there, had a look at the console, and it is, it is a work of art. It is not, it is, it's not a cheap piece of kit, but it is a work of art. It looks incredible. It's so well thought out as well. And that's definitely one to look out for, but it's going to be, I think he was saying to me that like a, a 16 channel console is going to be about 60,000, which isn't cheap. Oh, the other thing that really, this really, really, really got me thinking was I went over to the Neve um, section and I was talking to the guys at Neve and they basically had a Genesis Black console. Now, the Genesis Black console is brilliant for instant recall. It's analog and it's got instant recall in it. So it's it's perfect um, for me. I like I love recall. I, I want, when I work mixing, I want that inst ability to instantly recall everything. However, what they have added now, which is in prototype stages at the moment, uh, is the integration into Dolby Atmos as well. So they've got the ability to use Dolby Atmos with it. Um, and it's it was something else. It really had me considering, and I asked the question, <clears throat> and you'll see in the video, I asked them the question, can it replace my Avid S4? And the, the the kind of the answer was yes, it could, but it would limit you. It wouldn't give you as many features in terms of the door control. So I'm thinking now is like okay, right. Well, when I do make an upgrade to this room, what I will probably end up doing is basically what I'm going to look at doing in the future is having a mastering room and a mix room just for me. So I've got my own mastering room, I've got my own mix room, rather than have mixing and mastering. Which, at which point, what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to have my Avid S4, um, I'll be able to have my Avid S4 and a Genesis Black, for instance, or I might even put the film console in. I'm, I'm in two minds at the moment. I had a conversation with Dow the other day, which lasted for about an hour, where we were talking about Neve consoles, and then we're kind of, all oh, right, let's 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 jump in the car, let's drive up to Burnley, go see Neve, go for a tour of the factory, and really kind of know what console I want to buy, whether it is going to be the Neve or the film console. Um, both, I mean, you're talking in excess of uh, probably about a hundred grand for a console, which is expensive. And it does, honestly, it, it, it takes some considering. So I am maybe gonna go down that route at some point, but it's all, for me, it's all about that instant recall. And if I can recall stuff, um, I don't, I do not, one thing I will not, and I will not, and I will not go, go back to, is I will not go back to manually have to input put every single EQ because the problem you got, <clears throat> as good as analog is, um, the problem you've got when mixing is I work on an online kind of thing, orders come in, do the mixing, 
revisions, anything like that, I then, then send it off. Right, so, oh, my phone's ringing. In between me uh, restarting this video, I've actually gone to get my hair cut. So uh, just in case you see somewhat of a difference and wonder why. Anyways, right, so this console. Um, now the, the, the thing with it is, is I cannot go back to working with um, analog console and not having that instant recall. Now the, the uh, Neve console eradicates that. And the reason for that is, is, you know, I'm working with lots and lots of clients all over the world. They're sending songs in over the internet. I then um, work, mix the songs, send it back. Because it's an online process, there is some backwards and forwards. And you, you know, you, you can go through a set of revisions, maybe three, four times, let's say. So by having revisions, you have to be able to recall that mix exactly as it was. So that's one, that is like the main reason I stepped away from analog. Um, because now going into the, onto the S4, working in Atmos, in my opinion, you get a far better sound doing that than working on an analog console. And you know, I'm testament to that. I sold my analog console and I do not regret it one bit. Although if I did have 100% instant recall, such as the Genesis Black in Atmos, I would I would consider going back there. So, um, yeah, so that's the Genesis Black, and that is really something worth looking out for, especially if you're in the Atmos uh, game. Now, another uh, speaker brand that was really impressive was the Mum, I think they were called the Mum 8s, which... Um, if I remember rightly, MUM stands for M Modular Upgradable Monitors, right? And that is exactly what they are. Now, what they were basically saying to me was, look, what you can do is, here's the monitor, here's the cabinet, and you can buy the base model. Uh, I think the base model was something around £5,000. Then if you want to upgrade the tweeter to the Beryllium tweeter, you can take that tweeter out put the beryllium tweeter in and you can you can upgrade it um, and there were so many really good features and the, the best thing about this company was they come from a master in engineers background so they're basically building speakers for themselves and then they just started building them for everyone else uh, and and it, it looks to be going really well and they were really impressive monitors but the most impressive thing about them was was that where they were from a master and engineer background is they were building monitors for what they wanted. They were building these monitors for the purpose of what they needed them to do. And the, the main thing was this whole modular thing was like, right, if, um, if you need to upgrade the amps, the amps come off and you can put them in a rack. Um, things like the DSP boards, if, if you needed to upgrade the DSP, you could upgrade it. Everything was modular, so everything could be upgraded. The one really good thing, this was really impressive. So they had, um, so the tweeter, for instance, so you had the, um, so, so was it a freeway? I can't remember. I think it was a freeway speaker, um, if I remember rightly. Um, but basically, the tweeter, you could move the tweeter to here. So you had free, free speak. Yeah, you did, it was free. Um, you could move the speaker to here, the, the tweeter to here. And that meant that you could turn it on its side. Um, go on, on this one, go and watch the video I've posted on um, on the gear, uh, the gear fest um playlist that's on our on our YouTube channel because obviously when I'm interviewing them and I'm talking to them about it I go into a lot more detail in regards to all of this that like the guys talk about it in, in a lot of detail and they're really impressive and the monitors the monitors themselves were you know they were great monitors they were really good monitors but um what was mostly impressive about it was how well thought out it was um, and the good thing about it is and this was one thing they said to me was basically price wise What's good is that they're not working directly with, um, let's say, working with, with a, a supplier, for instance. They're building everything in-house. They're then uh, delivering everything. So orders come in by the website. They're delivering them, hand-delivering them. So the whole process is very personal. It's very kind of, let's call small business. Let's say they're very small business orientated. And by, by working in that way, 
they're cutting a lot of the the kind of overheads of using a supplier to supply them and that saving is passed on to the client so what they were kind of saying was you know you're talking an eight nine grand speaker for six grand because you ain't got to pay all the extras so yeah so i mean that was gear fest and on I will be going back next year. I will go back every year, to be honest. I love I love going and seeing all the new gear that's there. Um, and yeah, it was really good to see everybody. It was really good to it was really good to talk to so many like minded people. I had a really good day. Um, it was great to see the guys at KMR. Um, we went out for a drink afterwards with them. Um, yeah, and I mean it was it was a it was a good day, and. If you get the chance to go next year, I hope they put another one on next year. Um, I think it would be well worth going. Yeah, I had a really good time.